So in this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to use the whiteboard desktop app. So there's two ways to actually get there. Well, there's usually probably even more than that. But if I'm in the online version of the whiteboard app, I can just click on this button that says open an app and that should springboard out. I could also, if I want to just start right from the full featured app where I don't need the Internet per se, is I can just click my start button here and I believe it's under M for Microsoft. And there it is. Yes, it's under M for Microsoft, believe it or not. So I'm just going to click that. And now I'm going to open up into the full app version. Now it starts off looking very similar to the online version. It's going to give me my dashboard just like always. And I'm going to click create a new board. And it tells me right off the top, it's got this blue button, whereas the online version, I believe, said share. This just has a little person and a plus. So that's how I'm going to share with others. But notice the board. Let me just hide this. Your icon of options has now moved from up here to down here. Now notice there's more options. So this will give you a lot more functionality. Now, if I click the pen, remember that the other version had just four pens. This has one, two, three, four, five, six pens, plus a highlighter, plus ruler, eraser, and a lasso object. So there's lots of things here. And if I click on the pen, notice what I can do. I can actually adjust the size of the uh, tip of the pen as well as change the color. So if I wanted to just change it to Pine Valley Purple, notice the cool functionality I get. And I have all of these other pens. Now this one is a rainbow pen, so kind of fun, adds a little touch of creativity. Um, this one is a galaxy pen, and that's kind of fun. So those are just two versions of some added kind of colorful pens that give you a little more spice. And of course, the highlighter is great. So whatever you do with the highlighter, uh, it'll show what's what's behind the highlighter, just as your traditional highlighter does. So if you want to highlight some notes or text, you could do that. Of course, the eraser is here for you as well, much more dynamic. And I believe if you click on that, you can clear the entire canvas just by cl double clicking the eraser. Also, I have this great uh, ruler tool and that comes up and it's going to come up by default in a 45 degree angle and I'm pretty sure you can just use your mouse to turn it like that or uh, if you don't yeah I think uh, how oh and then if I just if I just have a pad mouse I can just run two fingers across I believe if I've selected the ruler I can use two fingers to move uh, this Across. So, and again, I can um, choose my pen and create my lines. I believe if I, uh, let's see, if I click right in the center of the ruler, I can move it around and then create all kinds of lines. If I wanted to use the ruler for artistic purposes, I can. Let's see what other options I get here. Um, I thought there was a way we could make it between uh uh, standard versus metric and I'm pretty sure you can but off the top of my head I don't see that option let me just see if there's any other functionality in there but uh, you know what we could probably go up here to settings and change it let's see if there's some other options here uh, I don't see it toolbar location okay well I'm not gonna get too carried away there but so there's the ruler I also have this uh, uh, selection tool that will allow me to, I believe, uh, there we go, move just that section around. So it'll allow me to capture uh, certain sections and then I can just expand those. I can uh, copy them. I can change the color scheme, etc. So some fun uh, functionality right out of the box just within the toolbar of the online version. But you may have noticed when I click this already, there's also some more great functionality. So if I wanted to ink to shape, so maybe I want to create some nice uh, circles and squares, 
I can do that, whoops, with as long as I have that enabled. So I've clicked that and I've labeled the ink to shape. So if I try and draw a really rudimentary square, it should. Well, it should have made that. Maybe not. Let's try that again. Oh, make sure. Oh, there we go. I need to enable that. So I'm going to click the ink to shape. It turns blue. Now, if I want to select that, see, it's going to make it into a nice square. It's also going to make a nice circle for me. And then if I want to uh, do my selector here, then I can make some adjustments if I want to. So, so there's that. So uh, Active Pen, not sure what Active Pen does. Um, oh, it lets me, it looks like I can move around. So if I click that uh, and get rid of that, uh, Ink to Table. So I could make a table if I wanted to. So yeah, we're not talking about a dining room table. So if I just start creating a table and there we go split it, it's going to make a table for me. That's what that tool does. And then I've got all kinds of exporting objects. So I can export this to uh, an image or a PNG or a SVG image. So there's ways to just export. I can send it to a OneNote if I want to share it with my students. If I want to post to Teams, I can do that as well. It's going to let me hopefully choose my team so I can send this out to my students. And I believe it's going to let them I'm just going to wait till this opens up. I believe it gives you the choice whether you want to make it collaborative or just post it out to the students. So um, I don't want to waste too much time there. We'll have to come back to that. You can send this as an email summary of everything. You can format the background. So if you're a math teacher and want to produce uh, dots and lines, you can do that. See, so you can choose that for doing uh, graphing. You can also change the color of the background if you wanted to. And you can even make some uh, different shapes. And for teachers, if you want to teach writing, you could do that as well. Not very fluently, obviously, with a mouse, but really some awesome functionality within there. So you can change the toolbar location. This is the toolbar location if we want to do that. So lots of cool stuff. Let me just see if this Teams things work. If not, I'll let you do that. But so to finish this, uh, I'd like you to, once you've created a background or a whiteboard, if you could share it with me. And you can do that by just going up here to the share. And you can just add my name or better yet, you should be able to create uh, a link, I believe. Let's see, yes, create a sharing link. And so, I'll do that again. So if you remember, so your objective here for this step to show me that you've completed it is click it, make some sort of drawing or board, and then create a sharing link. And just copy the link and then give it to me on the forum. So I hope that works. Have fun.